So I wanted to look at some of the devices of Satan and some of the things what the Bible teaches about some of the things that goes on uh, maybe in our lives that we can attribute not to anything other than that of the old devil. I think he still works hard against the, the Lord's church, and I think he works hard against the Lord's people. So uh, if you bow your head, we'll go ahead and get started this morning. Joe, would you start us off with a short prayer, please? Father, we thank you so much for the day that you've blessed us with, the opportunity we have to come and worship you today. We pray for all our teachers. We pray especially for Gary as he shares with us uh, your word. Help us to be uh, active students and help us to learn and apply these things to our lives. Bless those that are sick. We pray for those that have lost loved ones. Be with us as we study. In Christ's name, amen. Let's look at Genesis chapter number 3, verse number 4. As we start off this morning, uh, Jeff, we're going to start with you this morning. If you will read verse number 4 of Genesis chapter 3, and we're going to answer a very important question. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Okay. Let's consider the thought here. We know the whole setup. We know that the serpent has come to Adam and Eve and we know what God told Adam and Eve in the very beginning and he said look this tree over here in the day that you eat of that tree you're going to surely die somebody said to me one time well they didn't really know what death was all about I don't think that matters a whole lot the question that we want to answer this morning in verse number four the serpent said unto the woman you shall not surely die did the devil actually tell her the truth No. The serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. But she did. And that's the thing about it. And so I would hope and pray that people today recognize the fact that as we look at these devices of Satan, and there's a lot of them, and I probably won't get to a lot of them before the, the end of our time this morning, but there's a lot of things that the devil does and says in the Bible that really and truly still relates to us today. We know that we die today as a result of what happened here. And, you know, this is in the very beginning of time. This is with the first man and the first woman. And we consider the thought, you know, the serpent said, you shall not surely die. He told her the truth, but he didn't tell her the truth. You know, the fact of the matter was, he says, look, if you, if you do what God said do, you shall not surely die but she did. And so for all of us today, I hope and pray that we can utilize what the Bible teaches to govern our lives because, you know, whether we want to or not, we're going to all die. You know, it's appointed unto man once to die. Sometimes we may be young in our, in our dying. Sometimes we may live to be old in our dying, but we are definitely going to pass from this life as we know it. And so with that being said, a lot of the things that we need to relate to is given to us in the very beginning. And the devil, he, he works overtime with us sometimes, uh, and, and we don't really see it. Let's look at, let's go over to the book of Job. I'm going to stay in the book of Job for quite a while here. We know what happened in the book of Job with Job. But I want us to look at some of the things that, that really and truly I think happens with us today. I think the devil still works and I think he's still there, and I think he's still motivated to uh, do as much damage as he possibly can. Let's look at verse number 7 of Job chapter 1. Uh, let's read uh, on the right-hand side over here, Bruce. You want to start us off right there? We'll read verse number 7. Lord <coughs> said unto Satan, When it's coming, thou? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in Okay. Now, the Bible starts out by saying there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And guess who came with them? Satan. And so uh, I think a lot of times people don't regard the fact that Satan is amongst us in every aspect of our lives. You know, I mean, we may not, we may not think it, but Satan is amongst us, and he's, he's out there. And we can see that with the demise and the decline of our nation. We can see that with the demise and the decline of, 
of how things are working in our in our system. You know, the devil's working overtime, and he's he's making a lot of road inroads in in what mankind can do. And the next thing we see is when Satan answered the Lord from going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. What do you suppose really and truly was his his intent? Anybody got any thoughts about that? He's walking up and down. You know, he's in the in the world. What what do you think his intent is? I mean, the devil's never had any good intent. We know that because if you go and look at what the Bible says over here uh, in the same, in Job chapter 2, the Bible tells us about Satan. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he's in thine hands. And he says, But you can't kill him. You know. Now, in this case, God specifically said you can't kill him. I think personally, from my standpoint, I think the devil still has the ability to cause us to for major problems in our lives. And I think that's why a lot of the things that happen to people, and if you notice that good people are not immune to this, you know, this is something that all of us need to be aware of. Good people are not immune to what Satan can do. Now, uh, you know, and the consideration is given there. The Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan, and Satan answered him, saying, Walking to and fro. And I think a lot of times we forget how important it is to recognize that we do have an adversary. And, you know, for me, I, I think one of the things that's, that's plagued me most about being in a situation that I'm in and not being physically able to do a lot like I used to, I think Satan has a way of, of working against those that strive and do what's right. And so I, I wanted to encourage you all this morning to, to recognize the fact that you have to stay strong, you have to stay as much as you can, committed to those things that God requires of us as a Christian. And so let's look at another one. Uh, in questioning God, in Job chapter 1 and verse number 9, this is a pretty unique verse of Scripture. Bobby, you want to read that for us, please? So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Go ahead and read verse 10 too, Bobby, while you're there. Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. Now, you know, somebody says it's not, it's not good to tempt God. No, it's not good to, to question God or tempt God in any way. But in this case, the, the devil himself, he, puts the, he, he makes a proposal to God. And I think about this a lot of times. Has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? You know, Job had prospered. And I think the prosperity in our lives sometimes as a result is a result of God blessing us for good deeds. You know, I think God will bless a good deed. Y'all think that? I think so. God does bless good deeds. He blesses good Christian, wholesome living. There's no doubt in my mind. But in this case, you know, the, the devil is tempting God or putting, putting it before God for God to think about something that God knew. I mean, there, God's all-knowing. He knew what Job would do, but the devil still put it before God. He said, you know, you, you, just, you just touch him and, and take what he's got, and, he, and it's not going to happen. You know, he's not going to stay this way. And, you know, I think that's a good lesson for all of us today. When times get hard and when things get rough and things don't, don't go our way, we still have to stay as faithful to God as we possibly can. We still have to do as best we can to obey the, the commandments of God and do the things that's necessary to go to heaven. You know, we can't throw in the towel, you know. And I, I'm so thankful that I, I live with somebody that won't allow me to throw in the towel, you know. But I'm also thankful that God puts it before us and he says, you can't quit. You know, you got to keep going. you got to do what you can do. Now, in verse number 11 and 12 of this same chapter, let's go back to our right-hand side. Ain't Sybil, you want to read that? Look forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Verse 12. 
And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he had is in thy power. Excuse <coughs> me. Only a foe himself. Not for that hand. Okay. So Satan, so Satan went forth from the presence of the, of the Lord. You ever really thought how this must have played out? I mean, you know, we know what happened, but he's made a proposal. He says, you just put forth your hand and touch all that he had, and he's going to curse you to your face. I don't think Satan knew too much about old Job, did he? I don't think he really knew what God knew about him, Job. And that puts me to, to question some of the things that people teach sometimes. I don't think the devil is nowhere close to being what God is as far as what God knows and what God does and the power that God possesses. We know that God's power is, is, is far supreme than that of the devil or he wouldn't have ever been cast out of heaven and cast into the earth as the Bible teaches us. But from the standpoint of what the devil says here, he says he puts it before God and says, you just go ahead and do this and you see what happens. Now, I think I know why God did what he did because God knew what the outcome was going to be. He knew that Job could stand the test. And for all of us today, you know, it's important for us to understand, you know, we may be tested. You know, there may be a, a time in our life whenever there's temptations that's so great in our life that, that we just absolutely have become so weakened by the fact that the temptation is so strong that there's a possibility we might give in to it. But you see, in this case, this is one of those cases where, you know, old Job, he stood the test. And I think a lot of times we forget how important that is. You know, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes, you know, when you, when you really and truly are tested, if you don't give in to it, you ought to feel good about yourself. You ought to have some reason to rejoice in the fact that you never gave in to it. And that's an important part of being a Christian. You know, there are going to be things that you have to stand up to. And I mean, Gary and I both, <laughs> we got to stand up to a lot in the next few days. But the thing about it is, you have to stand up to whatever it is. And if it, if it gets the best of you, you can't throw in the towel. And that's why I think utilizing what we find here. The Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath in his power, and only upon himself put forth not thine hand. We know what he did to Job, and that's one of the things that is fascinating about the story of Job. Poor old Job, everything that happened to him, it was unimaginable. Now, let's go, let's look at a little further right here. Uh, staying in this same chapter right here. Notice, if you will, I wanted to look at verse Job chapter 2. This will be verse number 3. It's a long verse. And I want us to listen to that verse, if you will. Let's see. Let's, let's see. Where were we at over here? Okay, Myra, you want to read verse 3? That's a, that's a pretty lengthy reading. The Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? A perfect and upright man, one that fears God and echeweth devil from an evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Okay. Think about where we're at here. The Lord is they're in the conversation with Satan. God knows Job. He understands Job. And I think a lot of times we forget what God knows about us. He knows the inside of us and he knows the outside of us. He knows every aspect of our lives. He knows where we're weak. He knows where we're strong. He knows what we're capable of. He knows what we're not capable of. God is all-knowing from the standpoint of each and every one of us. And you know, Sometimes we think we know each other. And, you know, in a marital relationship, you know, sometimes you can be so close uh, with that individual and be so long into that relationship that you, 
can look at them and pretty much tell what they're thinking. You know, most of us understand that. It's been married for umpteen years. You can understand that principle. But you see, this was one time when God really and truly, he knew, and he knew in detail what Job was capable of. And so whenever you read those verses, I've thought a lot of times about what he said. And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although you moved me against him to destroy him, and it was without cause. You know, God, I don't think God would have ever allowed Job to die. I really don't. And, and you know, a lot of times I've had people argue the point. I don't think God would have ever allowed Job to ever die. But, you know, it was so much that was put on Job that it was almost to the point where, you know, you just wonder, you know, even with his wife saying, curse God and die. You know, get out of this. It's too bad. You can't go on. It's just, but God knew he could stand the test. Uh, in verse number four, we come back with Satan and what Satan really and truly thinks about the situation. Nicole, you want to read verse four, please? And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, ye all that a man hath will he give for his life. All that a man hath will he give for his life. And this is what Satan said, skin for skin. And all that a man hath will he give for his life. I don't know. I've thought a lot of times about how things are today. But, you know, we just celebrated Memorial Day. And, you know, a lot of times people forget what Memorial Day is really all about. You know, Memorial Day is a celebration of people that actually gave their life, you know, for something called freedom. And, you know, we're living in a society today where that's, that's going to be a real scarce thing in the next few years. But there's people out there that actually gave their life for freedom. But, you know, the devil, he wasn't right with what he said here. All that a man hath, all that he hath, would he, he give for his life. That's not true. Sometimes as a parent, you know, and most of us understand this as a parent, what would you do for your child if it was where you had to make a decision, it's going to be you die or your child die? Now, those of you who are parents, think about where you're at with this. What would you do? You get me. <laughs> you don't get him. You get me, you know. Free willing, scared, sweating, but get me. Don't get him, you know. And all that a man has would he give for his life? I think the devil, he mis he was misguided, you know, uh, in this situation. And God knew. God knew the situation. Now, the Lord said unto Satan in verse number 6, this one right here really carries a lot of weight, I think, with with what we can all be about. Let's see, uh, Linda, in the back, verse number six. And unto Satan, behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. Okay. I've had a lot of people argue the point of whether or not the devil could take his life. I think he could. I think he could. I don't think God was going to let him, but I think he could. Yeah, he told him, he said, you, 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 you can do anything you want to. He's in your hand, but you save his life. And so a lot of times people forget the fact, you know, and I've had people argue this point. Some people that are a lot more knowledgeable in Scripture than, than me sometimes, they argue the point, you know. But the devil, you know, taking his life, I think the devil had the ability to do that. And God said, you can do it all to him. But don't you take his life, you know. I think God made it very plain, you know. Job didn't understand what was going on. I mean, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't fathom what was happening to him, you know. And there's a lot of things that Job brought to the attention of God, you know, with, with all of what's happening to me. You know, God, why, why is this? But nevertheless, God did this for, for a reason. And I think sometimes we forget how important that is of God allowing this to happen to give us an indication of what it means to be obedient and faithful and stand the test of all of what God can throw at I mean, all of what the devil can throw at you, you know. 
I talked to a man just this week, and he's in the same situation that some of us are in. And he said to me, he said, I'm, I'm quitting. I'm throwing in the towel. I said, you can't do that. He said, yes, I can. He said, I, I'm just done. I said, no, you can't. You know, and I, I utilized this. I, I put this before him, and I said, you know, here's a man that, that was plagued beyond what diseases we could be plagued with, and he didn't throw in the towel. You know, he did everything he could do, you know, to stand the test. And, you know, that's one of the things. When I think about, you know, how this, this played out, you know, when I, I get down sometimes, I read about Job, and I, I listen to some of the things that, that the Bible teaches us about Job. Uh, Job chapter 9, verse number 24 Who wants to read Job 9, verse 24, Michelle? The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covers the face of who judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Okay. Question. He says, where and who is he? You know. And the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. You know where, when God cast him out of heaven, where did he go? The earth. And you know, I don't know about y'all, but I, I, I see it every day. You know, in, in the time that God has left me here on this earth, and 70 years now, almost, just in a few few weeks, a few days now. But he left me here this long, and I see it. I see what's going on. I see the wicked, and it's, it's, it's more wicked now and more, the more demoralized than ever I've seen it in my lifetime. And, and you know, the devil's working overtime. I mean, there is no doubt in my mind he's working overtime. Because somebody was saying to me the other day, he said, are y'all down on your attendance? I said, yes, we are. They said, oh, we are too. They wonder what's going on. I said, the devil's working overtime. People have just come to an understanding <clears throat> or come to some kind of a, a thought that maybe it's not that important to go to church anymore. But I think assembling ourselves together and worshiping and studying our Bibles ought to motivate us. It ought to help us to understand, you know, there's going to be a day of reckoning, and we're all going to stand before God, and we're going to, we're going to be judged accordingly, you know. And those that just willfully neglect the assembly and didn't really think it was necessary and all the things that's going on in our society today, I don't think that judgment's going to hold too, too good for them. You know, and I'm not being judgmental. I'm being honest with you. I think people today are not trying as hard as they need to to serve God and do the things. Now, Job, we know in his capacity, it would have been very easy for Job just to say, I've had enough. I'm done. You know, when you think about taking his children, taking everything he had, sores from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, he was demoralized in every aspect of his life. It would have been very easy for Job to just say, hey, I, I'm done. You know, that's it for me. You know, you can't do that. I mean, that's not what the Bible teaches. Any thoughts or comments? Well, let's look at, the, let's look at a, a passage in the New Testament and talking about the devil for a few minutes. In Matthew chapter 13, verse number 19. Matthew chapter 13, verse number 19. Let's see. Up front, Pam. Did you ever think about <laughs> how this plays out today? He says, when a person hears and they understand it not, then the old devil comes, the Bible says, and catches it away. He doesn't want us to know what's right. And, you know, for, for the most part of what our society is showing us today, most people don't want to know no way. But those that do learn and those that do know, the devil still has an intent. I think this New Testament passage carries a lot of weight with what I'm talking to you about today. I think the devil wreaks havoc with people's lives, and I think that's why you don't have as many people attending services like they used to. You don't have as many people serious about going to heaven as they used to be. And so I think that's one of the, the reasons. Notice that passage. He says, 
when they understand it not, then comes a wicked one and catches away and that, that that was sown in their heart. He wants to make sure that it doesn't take root and fester and, and grow. And, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, they may obey the gospel. And, and this has happened to me before. Maybe it's happened to Joe and some of the others. But, you know, I have actually taught people and baptized someone well, I say taught them. Maybe I didn't teach them because it didn't work out. But I baptized them on one Sunday, and the next Sunday they didn't come back. Wonder what happened. You know, I've often thought about this passage of scripture during that. One, has that ever happened to you, Joe? Where, uh, Joe, when you had somebody that you thought was really serious, and you, you, they obeyed the gospel, and then they just kind of fizzled. They just give up. The devil's work. That's happened, and it's a sad thing when when that goes on, you know. And so, I think the devil is still alive and working today. And you know, uh, Vic and I had a long talk this morning about things that that we we're, we're concerned about. But one of the things is that the devil is still with us, and he's still working hard against us, you know. <clears throat> and he plagues a lot of people. And so I wanted us. And this is not to, to cause fear in anybody's life. It's just to kind of promote the fact that. We need to be on guard. We need to be strong. We need to do what we can to be as faithful as we can and, and fight against the devil and all of what he's about. Any thoughts or comments before we move to the next one? Well, in John chapter 8, if you'll turn over there for just a moment, in John chapter 8, this will be verse number, I believe, 44. This is going to teach us a little bit about some of the characteristics of Satan. Ike, I'm going to get you to read that because I had, I've, uh, I've neglected to call on you guys, and I, I apologize for that. John 8, verse 44. Uh, you are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father will want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of... <laughs> you ever think about, think about what the devil is all about? You know, he said he's a liar and he is the father of, you know. And I think a lot of times people are... You think about how people are today and how misguided they are and how easily it is for people to become so misguided. We got people out there protesting things they don't know nothing about. They have not even a clue. And they, you know, the devil puts these things out there and people engage in them. And so whenever you look at this, he said he was a murderer from the beginning and he abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him, you know. Everything about the devil is real. And, you know, a lot of times people say, well, I don't like to hear about the devil, and I don't believe any no way. I had somebody tell me that just, just this week. I was trying to encourage them and trying to uplift them. And I said, the old devil's working overtime. And, and he said to me, he said, well, I, said, Diane, yeah, I don't much believe in the devil. I said, well, you better believe in him. I said, he's got the country. He's got the leadership of the country. He's got what we, you know, he, he's the author of, of the sin and, and all of the problems that we face. You know, he's the reason for that. You know, even though Job suffered all the adversity, we can suffer all of the blessings as well because he's exactly right in what he just said. All right, we'll have just a few moments to uh, ring the bell and get the other part of